Hey everybody, it's Ripley again. We're in the last section of the chapter, guys. This is fantastic. Um, we're going to talk about antiderivatives today. Ooh, how very sci-fi. It sounds like, engage the antiderivatives, Captain. That's ridiculous. Okay, think about all that an antiderivative is. It's, it just undoes, undoes a derivative. Derivative. All right, that's all that it is. It just, I don't even think that's a word. Undoes, right? Okay, so the way in which we note this mathematically is we say, we say that F, now notice, this is a capital. Get in the habit of seeing that capital F as representing an antiderivative. We say capital F of X is an antiderivative, antiderivative, of f of x, if and only if what? I mean, think about it. If I'm going to undo a, a derivative, this is true if and only if capital F primed of x equals f of x. In other words, think about it this way. What we're really saying here is that f of x is the derivative of f primed of x. That's what this says. Now, let's keep it simple. Intuitively, you can figure these out. There's not a whole lot to it. Let's say that um, f of x equals x squared. Okay. Well, what does that imply about capital F of x? I need a function. So here's what I'm thinking. I need a function whose derivative is x squared. Well, I know that x cubed has a derivative that's x squared. The problem is, if I take the derivative of this, over here, I'll write it in red, I'm going to end up with a 3x squared. I don't want a 3x squared, so what do I have to do? I have to divide by 3. Right? Now think about that. If I take the derivative of x cubed thirds, what do I get? I get x squared. There's only one problem, and this has to be addressed in sort of an abstract way. Sorry about that. This has to be addressed in sort of an abstract way. Do you agree that x cubed thirds plus 19? Because 19 is a constant, when I take its derivative, it becomes 0. So the derivative of this is x squared. How about minus 14 pi? Well, again, this is a constant. So the derivative is of a constant 0. So when I differentiate this, I'm going to get x squared. How about a Google? Google, right? So, Right, plus a Google, who cares, right? <laughs> its derivative is zero. So when I differentiate this, I get this. How do we address that? We use what's called an arbitrary constant. And the arbitrary constant is just a plus c. This is referred to as the arbitrary constant. Constant. Now, down the road, we will have all kinds of ways to be able to solve for that, that arbitrary constant. We'll talk a little bit about that right here or excuse me, in this section, but let's get our brains wrapped around some antiderivatives. So let's do some examples. Find the antiderivative, antiderivative, wow, derivative. I keep griping about the stylus, but I'm not replacing it, and I need to. Um, how about f of x equals, um, I don't know, what's a good one? How about sine of x? All right, well, I need to find the antiderivative. Well, so let's start with what we know. There is a function whose derivative looks like sine x, but it's not quite there. It's affectionately known as cosine of x, right? The problem is, now this is where what you're going to be doing is going back and forth between the derivative and the antiderivative. If this is the antiderivative of this, then when I take the derivative of cos x, I better get sine x. There's only one problem. The derivative of cosine is what? This better be on the hard drive. It's negative sine x. I don't want a negative sine x. Let me stick a negative on there. Look at that. Now, don't forget your arbitrary constant. How about this one? Uh, how about f of x equals 3x to the fifth uh, minus 9x cubed plus 1 over x minus secant squared x? Ooh, yuck. Well, I mean, think about it. Since the derivative of a sum is the sum of the derivatives, well, the, the antiderivative of a sum had better be the sum of the antiderivatives. All right, now let's see if we can figure this one out. I know I'm going to need a function whose derivative produces an x to the fifth. 
So I'm probably going to have to start with an x to the sixth, right? However, there's only one problem. Um, this doesn't have a sixth in here. So what can I do here? I need a three. So when I derive it, oh, look, one half will do it, wouldn't it? I mean, think about it another way. If I wanted to, I could just divide, I could have just divided 3 by 6, because when I take the derivative, the 6's would cancel and I'd get a 3. All right, how about this guy? Try this one on your own. Just try it for a sec. Just try it. You'll like it, I promise. Well, we're going to have an x to the 4th, but when I take the derivative of the x to the 4th, I'm going to need a 9, right? But if I take the derivative of this, I'm going to get 36. I don't want that. Oh, look, divide by 4. <laughs> That's easy. Okay, whoa. Whoa, what am I going to do with this? 1 over x. Is there a function whose derivative is 1 over? Oh, that's right, the natural log of x. Ooh, there's only one problem here, though. Remember, we talked about this back when we discovered the derivative of the natural log of x. This actually has to be the absolute value of x because this thing has a domain of all real numbers, this thing not so much. Okay? And then minus secant squared. Oh, wait, tangent. The derivative of tangent is secant squared. Don't panic. Take them one term at a time and take your time with them. If I remember, if I have to prove it, I'll just take the derivative of it. Right? What do I get? I get 3x to the fifth minus 4s cancel and I get 9x cubed. The derivative of natural log of absolute value of x is 1 over x and then minus secant squared x. C goes away because the derivative of constant is 0. Look at that. Well, hush my mouth. I have an antiderivative. That's kind of cool, huh? Now, let's, let's, if, sorry, I'm going to sit here and spaz. If f of x equals x to the n, let's come up, it's now officially time for a formula. Because I'm going to go through this hemming and hawing of, oh, I need a fourth, and there's a fourth, and I needed a six, and there's what, a half. Let's come up with a formula. If f of x equals x to the n, then what should its antiderivative, remember that capital F is the antiderivative, what should it be? Well, what did we do? We took x to the n plus 1, right? But we had to divide it, and whoops, this should be, divide it by n plus 1. 